What up, what up, what up? Welcome to another episode of New Orleans That Basketball, New Orleans That Network Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Rafael Radler, joined by my fellow middle brother, Gary Jimenez. What is popping with you, bro? What up, what up, bro? Everything's all good on this side. The city is in good spirits after a it was like a mini torrential hurricane <laughs> that passed by. It was wild this past week. I uh, hope, hope everybody is uh is doing well. I know some of our people in Slidell, uh, you know, had a tornado touchdown uh, and had some some property damage and and some injuries and things like that. So for everybody uh, that's in that and that was affected by that, I know that our, our thoughts and prayers are with you. Uh, if you reach out to, to on social media, let us know uh, how you're doing and, and and if anything that we could do for you, uh, please do that. Uh, you know, I, I as a person that lives in New Orleans, you know, we deal with natural disasters and, and and those things luckily we got spared other than the usual the pumps don't come on run for the high hills park your car on the neutral ground but, mm-hmm. but other than the 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 the, the flooding we were kind of spared but i know some of the some of the people were not uh so lucky so prayers to you all um you know and hopefully everything works out for everybody and everybody is, is safe and sound uh with that being said though man they're in a the festive mood it is french quarter fest out uh, right now going on as we speak uh, lots of food and vendors down there so if you you know if you're if you're out in the city just go out downtown and uh, to the quarters and support you know some of these local businesses that are around uh, that are the lifeblood of the community so just go out there and support get some really good food uh, and, and and network and, and be amongst people uh, talk about the playoffs coming right so um, just go out there and, and support uh, if you can but outside of that man everything's all good basketball is is is, is coming to an end Playoffs are coming to an end. Seems like every single night I'm watching a game and it's like, yeah, so this is on the line. This team could go from two to seven. This team could go from seven to, to ten. And it's just this is what the playing tournament has done to the to the end of the season. Uh, and I'm grateful for it because there's just a lot of a lot of things at stake. And, and I think coming into this Sunday, um, you know, this is going to be the most one of the most exciting days of the in NBA history with almost every game being you know competitive and and people having things to play for so i'm excited man like i said as a basketball junkie i am that is that is that's what i live for um so uh, how's everything on your side bro uh everything is blessed uh you're right shout out to the draft the nfl draft coming along i don't know if you're excited for that if you're a saints fan or not i don't know and and the WNBA draft that one too on monday so um Mm -hmm. this is the exciting part of the year i know the masters are on Tiger was playing. That's pretty much the only reason why I've got the Masters on the TV. But outside of that, <laughs> um, you're right. There's a lot of competitive basketball being played right now. And it's exciting to watch. It's exciting to be a part of whether you're rooting for the team or whether you're just watching the, the games as a casual uh, uh, observer. Like it, it, it is it is a fun thing that the, the NBA has created. You wish the NFL could kind of get with that and kind of come up with some different things that might be different than the past, I don't know, 40 years. But the NBA hit the hit it. They hit it on the head uh, with this uh, with this playing situation because it just makes every fan base hang on for that much longer thinking that their team still has its chance. But before we get too into the show, because the Pelicans definitely still have a chance, make sure you guys will follow us on New Orleans dot basketball. That's N O. OB no E um, on TikTok, on Twitter, on IG, on X, whatever you want to call it. Make sure you like the episode below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Exciting times ahead for this franchise uh, and for the city. So what a difference a week makes. <laughs> <laughs> a week ago, you know, pigs were flying. The world was ending. <laughs> <laughs> like the sell the team this team will never make it um after just an abysmal showing as a homestand without Brandon Ingram with Jose and other ca- characters and then of course the pelicans go on the road to play all the people closest to them in the current standings that basically will tell them if they're going to be in the play in, if they're going to be in the playoffs and where those games will be seeding. Cause every single game matter, even though you're playing the play- blazers who, you know, the only people they're playing is Aiton, who's just trying to get his numbers up and Scoot Henderson, who, you know, is coming along this back half of the season. But outside of that, everyone is playing for their play in playoff livelihood. 
So, of course, the Pelicans come off a huge emotional win um, versus, versus the Phoenix Suns. Willie Greens gets his get back from his team and his Devin Booker and, and, and the, the Pels win an emotional one they had to have. Into a Trailblazers game for where the first half you're like, uh-oh. Are they about to lose <laughs> one? Or are they about to lose it and have the timeline in another civil war yet again? They don't do that. They come out in the second half like wall booters and they put the, the blail, uh, trailblazers to bed like they should be. And then you walk into a game versus a king that you already had beat four times. You beat them four times. It's hard to beat a team five times. First of all, let me get your take on that. Is it really hard to beat a team like multiple times in the season? Like, yeah, there's an in-season tournament this year, so you played a team five times versus playing a team four times. But, like, generally speaking, is it really that hard to beat a team four times if, like, they're not very good and you are a good team? Like, I feel like that's being thrown around a lot, and, like, I just don't know if that's necessarily true. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think I think there is some credence to it because, first of all, you don't play a team five times very often right. in the season. You don't get that opportunity to do it. Um, but I think there is some to where, like, if if you if you consider yourself a professional franchise and you consider yourself a professional NBA coach and you have, you know, um, superstar players, max contract players and you have playoff aspirations and you let a team beat you five times, it's like, <laughs> you know, like you there should have been some kind of adjustment. Somebody should have got thrown out. Somebody should have got flagrant <laughs> fouled. Like you had to do, you had to switch something up to do something and you don't. It's like, how often does that happen? But at the same time, like, like I keep talking about you, the Pelicans being in this, in this unique situation. They're just a unique team. And I think they, they are a unique team that is uniquely a terrible matchup for Sacramento. No matter who is playing, no matter who's on the court, who's off the court. There was just something about the way the Pelicans play basketball. Um, and I, I think part of it starts with Herb and, and, and Dice, which we'll get into. But some of it, it, the way they play basketball is just a horrible matchup for, for the for the Kings. And, I mean, that that's tough to lose five times in a season to the same team. That is – you 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 I, you want to talk about – and you, you kind of saw it coming because they asked De'Aaron Fox about which team you would want to see play. And he was like, man, just – as long as it's not the Pelicans on the schedule, like uh, Mark, I think it was Mark Spears told that story. And so uh, I, I think, you know, they, they knew, and you know, you've heard Mike Brown talk about the Pelicans uh, and what I, like I tweeted, he was going to run out of adjectives of what the Pelicans <laughs> do to his team. He took the ass whooping. He, he beat us up. He took over physics. He used all of those words in the other four games that they lost. So it was tough to beat them by five. Right. So, Let's talk about that game. I don't really need to talk about the Trailblazers game. It came and went. The Pelicans <laughs> took care of business. And they hung around too long, but they finished around. So this Kings game, which, again, there's no B.I. And, and ironically enough, Larry Nance has played really well versus the Kings. Like, he tends to give some bonus trouble uh, because they're – similarly sized and similarly built and Larry Nance is more physical of a player. And so they move the same. So Sabonis' advantages don't really shine versus Larry Nance, but he doesn't play in this one for personal reasons. And the Pelicans come out with a 23 point lead in the first quarter. Now quickly after the lead is shrunk <laughs> down and throughout that, that second quarter going into halftime, you're like, is this one of those blown leads that the Pelicans is going to revert back to? Because, yeah, they beat the Trailblazers, but, like, the games that matter, primetime games. We talk about primetime games for this team this season, and hit they have not gone well so far. So you're on TNT. You're the game to watch. Are they going to squander this one away? The Pelicans are out. CJ McCollum comes out. And, and, and let's take a second to talk about CJ. So we talked about it on the last pod. You know, B.I. going down and the Pelicans really not having any other shot creators outside of Zion. And if you throw it to J.B. on the post, really don't have any other shot creators on the team. Just people who can get their own shot consistently other than C.J. And him being put in a position where you're the point guard, C.J., but you're also the number two option, C.J., but you're also the catch and shoot player, C.J., but also, C.J., we need you to defend on the other side. It was a lot being put on to him these past two weeks without Brandon Ingram. And I, I, I tweeted about it. If you look at the totality of this season, not just this Kings game, 
But from CJ going down with the lung and Zion not being in the best shape that he needed to be the first part of the season and B.I. not having like a typical B.I. season so that CJ really had to do more than maybe you went into the season anticipating him having to do because he essentially had to function as a second option for almost the entire season. So if Zion wasn't where he needed to be, or B.I. has been out, like, it's C.J., C.J., C.J. has been the number two on, on some nights, the number one option. And so in a game like this where, you know, Zion is making his impact and the Kings are doing whatever they can to possibly stop him, C.J. steps up in a big way. And this whole week, he's averaging 30. Now, some of it inefficiently, but points you had to have to stop runs, especially in the, well, get, get into the Warriors game, late game, step back threes, like clutch shots that you needed to have on the road in these tough environments. Talk to me what you saw from him. Talk to me what you saw from really the second half of this Pelicans team that really put the Kings away. Yeah, absolutely. I, I you know, there was, we got sent out a, um, like a like a poll on on Twitter, right? And it was a couple of, I think it was like towards the middle of the season, and uh, it was from Retro Pels, and and they asked about who is the the MVP of this season so far up until that point, right? And I I missed the two, I didn't see the two, the the message, but I, I saw it late, um, and it came out that like most people who they sent that uh, that poll out to, um, it was a lot of people for the CJ. And I, not knowing that, before they put that tweet out, I said, oh, I didn't see the text. I didn't see the message. My vote is for CJ. Um, not that it matters right now, but my vote is for CJ. And so you you look at that part of the season and, and looked at everything that he carried up until then. And then you, you come to the end of the season and you look back and you say, yeah, you know, Zion reaching his level, which we'll talk about, you know, reaching his next level. That has been, you know, done wonders. I think for the ceiling of this team, right? I think him getting to where he needs to be is is where the ceiling has. Trey Murphy getting to where the ceiling uh, is, but the reason uh, him getting better is is why the, the ceiling has reached uh, kind of going up for the Pelicans. You know, all of these different factors. Brandon Ingram coming back is going to raise that ceiling for the Pelicans. But what CJ has done for this franchise this season is the reason the floor is where it is right now because there have been opportunities for this team to fall off a cliff, um, you know, for for myriad of reasons, right? We, we talk about like talk about Zion and, and him not coming into to season in full form and ready to play, um, and Brandon Ingram going through uh, the things that he's gone through uh, as far as injuries and just you know. Uh, uh, kind of adjusting his game uh, in a different manner. Trey Murphy being out and then going through his slumps. All of that has been mitigated, you know, a, as far as how bad of a of an effect that could have had by C.J. McCollum. And again, you 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 said it, you know, perfectly. With all of the all of the the jobs and all of the hats that C.J. is being asked to wear. You know, he when he was traded here, they asked him, you know, why did you want to come? Remember, he chose New Orleans. Why did you choose New Orleans? And, you know, he gave this flowery, you know, eloquent answer, you know, the journalism major that he is. <laughs> but he said, I, you see the talent. You see Zion. You see Brandon Ingram. And you see all of these other guys on the team. So, like Antonio Daniels says on his, on his serious show, he came here to be – he didn't come here to be Batman. He didn't come here to be Robin. He came here to be Alfred. Right. Like he came here to supplement these guys and get these guys aligned um, onto, a, a, you know, onto the right path and, and, and show that professionalism, but also give his 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 basketball on court skill to fit in, to be behind those guys and support those guys. But, man, he's been asked to be, you know, the, the like you said, the shot creator, the, the, the point guard, the general. But you also got to catch and shoot. But like. You can't get too many shots up and, you know, you got to transform yourself into the three. But like we also need those little floaters and stuff that you be making and and, and show, like he's just been asked to do a lot. And listen, I have my I've had my qualms with with CJ and, and some of his shot selection. I think that's a though that is a reasonable take sometimes where he where he you know tends to lead with his shot even when it's not going in. But at certain times, you need that guy who has that 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 shooter's mentality and that veteran presence to 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 get grab this team by the horns and get them over humps and drag them over over times where they don't have the offense that they have. And this Sacramento game showed, 
you know, what his skill set brings to this team where he has it going like that. And he is that 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 third and fourth gravity, you know, guy where like you have to like guard CJ. They were Sacramento was starting to guard CJ, like face guarding him, like you would guard Steph Curry because he was just that hot. And that allowed Zion to get where he needed to go. We remember that first Sacramento, not the well, I was about to say the first Sacramento, but there's so many Sacramento Kings games. But the one in New Orleans, the second one where they built that wall in front of they were like anybody but Zion. Well, good luck doing that when CJ is hitting and Trey Murphy is hitting. Um, and now you're 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 pulled to guard that guy, and, and you saw what it did for Zion. So I mean, this this game, obviously, CJ, and I, I see people talk about CJ. I tweeted about that that CJ was on a heater. Maybe this isn't a heater, like at, at some point. It's not a heater, and it's just I mean, your yeah, season. There's only one game left in the season. Yeah, so. at some point, like at some point, you can't be on a season long heater. I mean, maybe you could, but like he's on a season long heater. Um, and and, and this game, obviously, like I say, he's been having in, incredible games as as of lately. But this game, with everything on the line, Sacramento playing for their their playoff lives, like they they are they need to win every single game. Uh, in order to get out of the playoff, obviously they they've lost the the two chances, but at that point they needed every single game uh, to win, and they they came out and fought like hell. Um, and, and Zion, like I I tweeted out like every time Sacramento made a run, shout out to to to, to Tony Stark and Iron Man. They just the 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 Pelicans just walked up to the to the scoring table. It was like we got a Hulk, and then Zion <laughs> will come in and score like ten straight points. And it just you know it, it is. Zion is is he is a Sacramento King nightmare. He is a they 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 wake up. You Vladdy Divac was wakes up in cold sweats thinking about Zion. So um, now nah, this was this was a, a a fantastic game for Zion, CJ, and Trey. Obviously, getting back into his form and, and doing the things that he's doing now. Um, but I think you know when we give up when we give credence in this Sacramento game to to these guys. You also got to throw in Dyson and, and Jose as well. Um, you know, they play well in, in the in the, the bench. And I think everybody had their moment, but CJ, Trey, and Zion kind of rose uh, to the top and were the best players in the game. Yeah, I mean, one last thing on CJ. You know, obviously his skill set and the way he's morphed his game to be a catch-and-shoot player while the team is whole is one thing. But again, and I – I think we talked about this from the first week that CJ came to this team. I think the number one thing that CJ offers to this team and value to this team is maturation and professionalism. What he's done off the court for a player like Zion, like you had to get Zion to this point. I don't think you get here without CJ McCollum. Like there was an interview, I think Jen Hill uh, asked Zion and then the subsequent game asked CJ about Zion. And he said, you know, what CJ has been able to do, he's talked about CJ putting him on game and really holding him accountable in a way that maybe a player at the end of the bench who never was a star, never scored 20 points, or a player who who has never really been that good could never do. It was had to be someone you looked up to, you trusted at a different level to make you look at this is how you need to carry yourself from game to game. I'm not sure if Zion gets there without CJ, but not only just for Zion, but for this team. There were so many shots. Sacramento cut the game to two late in the game. CJ, calm, cool. You could see even Zion was a little frantic. You could see the team started to get a little fr- – and CJ, very calm, collected. Let me get to what I need to get to in order to score. Without BI on the court – I'm not sure there's another guy on the team that can do that because they've been there. They've experienced that and they've, they've not, not scared of that moment. And so again, from what he brings from both on the court and off the court, can't, cannot applaud David Griffin and, and the staff enough for that addition. So the last thing I want to talk about this particular game for him, and you and I have talked about this off the pod. When you look at this playoff series, you see Jokic at the top. And Shea at the top, and Ant at the top, and Luca at the top, and Kawhi at the top, and KD and but you name it. Like everybody who's been to the promised land, either won, won multiple times, or came just short. Guys who've been there, you look at the Pelicans roster, and you may say Zion hasn't been there. Obviously, zero playoff games under his belt. BI, no playoff games, no playoff series under his belt. So if you go into a series and you say who has the best player? 
who has the best two players, whatever it may be, a lot of people may say one of those other teams. Well, the biggest difference for the Pelicans, and we've been talking about it since the beginning of the season, there's a ton of teams in the West that can fill it up. They can score. They can put 130 on the night. They can hit 33s in the game. Whatever it is, they can do it every night. But there's not a lot of teams outside of Minnesota and maybe OKC that have the ability to defend. And you brought it up a little bit. I think the biggest differentiator, now again, Zion is the biggest question mark. So we don't know if you'll get Super Saiyan Zion. You don't know what you're going to get going. In. I mean, if you look at this past week, you would think you kind of know. But <laughs> you, you don't know what you're going to get. You just don't know until it's there. But what you do know is going from her hounding you up the court for the entire first quarter, and then he sits down, and then Dyson comes in the game, and De'Aaron Fox and every other guard. It's like, what the hell? Like, there is no break from that. You saw it from Steph Curry with tossing the ball to the eighth row over and over and over. Like, you, you the frustration that, that those two can bring, and not just from a hustle standpoint, not just from a scrappiness standpoint, they are tacticians on the defensive end. Like, they can shut you down from a brain game, not only with their physical skill, but, but they're anticipating your moves based off your tendencies. Going from Herb to Dyson or, God forbid, them both being on the court at the same time and you pick and roll off one and you're like, damn, now I got the other one? Like, that is a differentiator that Dyson Daniels getting healthy just does so much for this team. Like, that is that defensive-minded. Like, we talk about Minnesota, they're the number one defensive league, but in terms of just perimeter defenders, I don't know this side of Boston if there's a better combo than those two. Yeah, yeah, man. I I have been, you know, we 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 have been we have been pouring into the Dyson role on this this show for a while. But Dyson has he has really blown me away with his his ability and it's I, it, it, the the tweet I put out when I was like you know there are, there's a there's a difference between skill defenders and will defenders right so you have these will defenders like Pat Bev like Draymond like Dylan Brooks you know guys like that who like try to get up into you and and, and kind of use physical Draymond like try to get into use physicality. And they told a line of aggression and like good defense. Like, are you are you being a little too much and you're fouling too much? And then you got guys like Drew Holiday and like Derek White and 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 guys who are who are more skilled defenders. They know where you're going. They 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 use their feet. They use their hands. They use it. They move their hips, and they they use their eyes. And and they they go for calculated steals right it there's no wasted motion they're not just swinging and 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 doing things like that and watching herb and dyson play it, it is it's similar to having drew it, it's similar to the way that drew holiday defends like they, they're, they're beating you to spots and every time you think you know where you're going like they're beating you there and it's it's gotten to a point and this might this would have this it still feels a little sacrilegious to say <laughs> but but Dyson Dyson might be a better on ball defender than Herb Jones. He might be a he might be a better uh, ball on ball defender. Now Herb is the 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 game changer, and that's what Dyson has talked into, right? Like he wanted to make more defensive plays, and he wanted to do things where he could change the game, as opposed to like just your, your good good spot good spot pass. Now that now, now your part of the defensive rotations are over. Like he's out there still is what they say right. football. Right. Yes, right. And so he is the guy that is now he's he's getting steals. He's putting he's putting uh, getting in the passing lanes. He's playing down man on a five as, as the five and on defense some of the times where they're switching um when Larry Nan as Larry Nance has not been uh, available. Dyson is the five out there on defense. Um and you know it kind of Zion plays the the big man on offense. That there's just a lot of switchability and things that he's done. And not only that, he's knocking down a respectable amount of threes. And I can tell we've always talked about his confidence. And you can tell that Dice's confidence is going, is getting better because there was a game where he like airballed a three and the so ball came good. right back to him and he shot and made the next three. And that is the, the confidence that he has to play with in order to, you know, to, to be as, as good as he is. Now, 
He has to learn how to finish. He we're, we're still working on the dunks. We you know we if if Fred Vinson has a school of dunks, Zion need to open up a little you know like a little <laughs> PE department in there with the with the with the school of dunks. Uh, and need to need to take Dyson up there with him. Um, but I I think he 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 has a lot of time to grow. Again, we 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 in a, a situation where people want these players to come in and be ready. You get spoiled watching Zion, the Zions of the world, and the Lucas of the world, and the Victor Wembanyamas who come in and they're incredible from day one. But uh, but everybody's growth is not the same. And for Dyson to still be the youngest guy on the team, I mean, he is still learning and and growing and, and getting better, right? Like Z- we we call Zion. Very, very young, and he's 23. Like Dice is like 21, like 20. So, like, he has a lot of time to grow um in this and, and develop. And I think you're starting to see it. And to be honest with you, I don't I think uh like Dyson would have will be a great defender no matter where he has gone. But the fact that he gets to learn every day from Herb Jones, I mean, that is a blessing in of itself for, for, for Dyson. And you could tell he's picking up some of the things that, that Herb does. He, he he talked about wanting to be like Herb uh, as far as on the defensive playmaker. So um, I, I just think there's a lot, a lot to, 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 to value from Dyson. And he's going to come in um, and he's going to co- come in in a, in a playoff series and call somebody hell. Um, and, and I think that he's going to be so valuable uh, coming up in, in this stretch that hopefully the play, uh, the playoffs and the Pelicans can make. Right. And, and, and Tedra makes a really good point in the comments that Herb and Dyson are different defenders because Dyson, he talked about adding weight in the off season before mm-hmm. he was drafted. He talked about adding weight because he wanted to be able to guard the tougher guards that like to body you like a Kawhi, like a Luka, the wing defenders, whereas Herb's a little bit slender. And so sometimes he gives way in that, in that perspective. But again, having both of them and you talk about having Herb next to him, but having Fred Vinton here gives me confidence that his shot will get that. Right. If you compare Dyson's game to anybody, who are you compare to? Probably Lonzo Ball. Right. Mm-hmm. And so if someone who had a flawed job shot worked with Fred Vincent and turned it around and then you saw her do the same thing. Why would you think that you would not get a similar result with a player very wired, very similarly? And so um, I think, again, Dyson and, and his ascension and his mix with this core of this team, I think it's right there. I think his Mm -hmm. importance is right there in terms of how this team grows moving forward. So, again, you take a a very passionate win, and oh, by the way, you got a back-to-back in Golden State. Uh, They had won like the past nine out of ten games, and the only game they lost was to the Mavericks by like two points and all that. You go to Golden State where historically things have gone great in the first half, and then Draymond mucks (laughs) it up, and then it becomes a fight, and then the Pelicans – have have succumbed to the emotions of the game versus le- keeping the main thing the main thing. I can't tell you how impressed I was watching the Pelicans in this game, not only because they didn't get into any of the mucking it up. Now, CJ had some words with Clay, but you didn't see people mucking it up with Draymond. They didn't bite into that. Zion, for Zion measures, did not have a good offensive game. Draymond defended him well, fouled him well. A little bit of both uh, from that standpoint. (laughs) And so, like, he didn't have as efficient of a game. And still, this team found a way. They just came off, again, it's about finding ways to win in different ways. You just come off scoring 135 points versus the Kings in an offensive battle to the very next night flying to a different city and having to win a defensive battle versus a team that you struggle with your entire totality of a team, right? And even Willie Green, probably you saw him, you know, dap up Steve Kerr after the game and take a second to like breathe. Like I really did this. Like you could tell there was a lot of weight on that particular game, but the way the Pelicans handled this game and kind of stiff armed the Warriors every time they got close, like this, this is the type of wins that you want to stack going into a playoff scenario, whatever that may be. But in particular, we talk about what CJ has been able to do this past week. I think what's the most important development while Brandon Ingram has been out is that you starting to see Trey Murphy really look like Trey Murphy. Like we talked about this, you know, earlier in the season in February and March. 
And you said like Trey struggling, but you know, March is where he turns it on and he had a hot streak and then he kind of went cold ish again. Well, this stretch of games, you saw it all from Trey. You saw it all from the scoring perspective, the cockiness perspective, the, the half court threes perspective. And you saw 20 points after 20 on short amount of attempts, but efficient attempts from that standpoint. And you and I talked about it. You're going to need every ounce of Zion greatness. You're going to need every ounce of Brandon Ingram greatness. But really to compete, and especially if things align the way they align and Denver is staring at you in round one, you're going to need every amount of Trey Murphy greatness too. Not as a nice to have, not as, not as of, oh, we just need a couple from you, Trey. You're going to need Trey to perform like this in order to keep up with those teams because they're going to do everything they can to stop options one and options two and options three sometimes. And guess what? You don't have an option for Trey Murphy. So in this game where, it was, again, another emotional game where the Pelicans close out in crunch time scenario, what did you see from the Pels that you like? Yeah, this, this was this was a game. This, this was a game that showed me that this Pelicans team is – is in the right headspace uh, to go in and compete in these playoffs. Like the Sacramento game was was obviously all of these games. Once you beat the Suns, the the, the gauntlet was laid. Like you had to win. You got to win all out. You can't lose another one uh, if you want to avoid that playing. So every one of these games has been so crucial, even like you say, those Blazers games and things. And the Sacramento game was important. But you had beat them four times. And I think if you ask anybody, you would be like, who's going to win this game? Anybody would probably be like, the Pelicans going to win this game. This Warriors game, though, second night of a back-to-back, Clay rested. Draymond rested. They wanted to win this game. They wanted to win this game. Second night of back-to-back for you. You win another emotional game in, in, in Sacramento. Um, and you get into to San Fran. And you're going against... One of the faces of the of the NBA, the the NBA's past and, and current in Steph Curry, and a, a prideful team with with legends, first first ballot Hall of Famers who are dying to get as the home court advantage in their play in tournament game. So they had everything in the world to play for. And again, historically. This was a this is a team that this franchise, not this iteration of the team. No, this franchise has had an issue with Steph Curry, Clay, Draymond, and 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 uh and Steve Kerr. And you go into that building, and first of all, Trey Murphy, Trey Murphy had some people mad yesterday. I he some of the shots that he took and made, <laughs> I it, there is he they, they were I know those people were like. We used to do this to people like we're we're used to the the Chase Center logo being stepped on and shot from, but it's usually Steph Curry. It's usually right. Clay and Trey was up there knocking him down. And when he is his expressive self, when he is his confident self, that that when he's the enigma, when he's the enigma, there is there is there is little you can do with the Pelicans' offense because. You have to give something up. And if Trey is shooting 30 footers on a dime, um, you know, and, and bailing out bad possessions with bombs from the from the timeline, then that that's just is deflating, right? Every time they they try to make a the Warriors try to make a run, you know, Trey Murphy was hitting a three, you know, and 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 getting that lead instead of it being at three is six now. Instead of it being at at, at four, is seven now. And it, he was like the, the the backbreaker for each and every uh, of their runs. CJ in in this game was incredible. This is this is a guy. I mean, we he's we talk about him being on a heater, but what we saw last night was a was a guy who who is firmly in like this is my time. Like these, I, this is my time to get up and get this team gear going. Because that shot, that last three point that he hit, which Ball. completely yeah. blew the, you know, blew, took the the win all out their sails. Shot game on the line, you know, the 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 time is the shot clock is down. It's a bad possession, 
in the fourth quarter of a tight game against some of the, the – they played the most clutch games in the NBA. And Steph Curry is probably going to win clutch player of the uh, of the league. Maybe maybe DeMar has done enough to win. But Steph Curry is up there um, to, to win that, that award. And, and CJ just – Time after time after time after time, um, you know, just 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 me shot after shot. And this is a this is a listen, the Zion this this stretch on the road, he went for six steals again. I mean six blocks against Phoenix. He went for five steals against Sacramento. When we talk about Herb and Dyson being defenders, the the level of effort that Zion has been giving is a game changer. There's a lot that Zion has showed over this this run, over this 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 run, uh this road trip, the West Coast road trip that has people like hmm, like the midi, like the pull up, like the three. There's just a lot of things that he's doing. But for me, the effort that he gave on on this road trip as we kind of just kind of close this road trip out. That the effort that he's given on this road trip, bro, on the defensive side of the ball that's the game changer for me because if we just talked about the importance of Herb and Dyson and having those guys available that other teams just don't have. They don't have guys who aren't your best players like in the in the case of the Clippers, right? You got Zion and Paul, I mean, uh, uh, Kawhi and Paul George, and they are your wing defenders, right? You might throw P.J. Tucker out there. But, like, they have to expend energy on the defensive side and the offensive side. Zion, we you you have that in New Orleans with like Dyson and Herb. They aren't your best play offensive players, but you can stick them on the best players and let them play defense. But if Zion is going to be a reliable option to defend some of these guys, and now Dyson and Herb can be your next, also like can be also be out there to to supplement that whole unit. That is the game changer for me. And the play that that showed, I, I posted it on Twitter where he contested Harrison Barnes at the rim. He landed with one foot in the restricted area and dead sprinted two steps. The ball was already in Chris Darte hand and he got out there and contested. And you, you could see the contest through Chris Darte all so bad that he like jumped to the side. And I mean, I'm like, Garrett, that- if you saw Zion jumping at yes. you, your natural thought is probably, oh, I'm going to hesitate at least a second. Absolutely. And, and I, I I don't – I'm not saying Chris Darte was wrong in trying to avoid <laughs> that. I'm just saying it was noticeable. that, And that is the kind of effort that, like, if you're put, if Zion is putting that kind of effort out, you know, that – that no one else has any – you have no excuses for anybody, and it just raises the level of intensity. I think part of the reason why Zion had a – sub not by his standards a subpar game is that he he was saving he was saving bro it was wild he was he was saving energy on the on the offensive end like he was because he saw other people getting involved and he was laying it out on the defensive end and I cannot explain to you how how much of a game changer that is so with all the things that Zion has shown over this 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 pass run and listen the three and the, the pull ups those are sexy we are we are like oh give give us more of those like oh just give us more of those those are those are beautiful that defensive intensity though man and that defensive effort and that commitment to the defensive end from from Zion I think that is the thing that that pivots this team into being okay what can they do to all right, like this team is for real um, in, in a playoff series, and and you're gonna need it. Depending, no, no matter where you you fall on this on this playoff run, um, no matter what seed you are, no matter who your opponent is. But if you know, obviously it's three six right now. Denver's there. If it's Denver, you're gonna need every single a- a- advantage you have. And I think Zion uh, being locked that locked in on the defensive end would be is one of those things you're gonna you're gonna have. Yeah, this is the the credit to the coaching staff. And as frustrating as people have been all year long, they've stayed true to who they are. And you've got it. You have to give them credit to to the staff that from day one, Zion talked about not everybody was bought in at the beginning of the year. Well, now it's very similar to the, the Celtics. 
if Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are defending their asses off and you got Drew Holiday and Derek White out there too, you have no excuse. Like you have no reason not to. And so to, to that same point, if you have four plus defenders and you can match up based off body style, strength, size, speed, height, things like that, and you have a shot blocker behind you, which we'll talk about in the offseason, how desperate that is needed for this team. You make it so difficult for the other team to score so that even if you have a bad offensive night, you still give yourself a chance because you are so locked down on defense and you're creating offense from your defense as well. And so you've seen some of that transpire over this road trip as well. So let's talk about the road. Let's talk about home. the Pelicans finished the season with the most road uh, wins in the NBA because they played one more road game than Boston did because of the in-season tournament. At home, they're 21 and 18. Not a terrible record, but you generally don't see a 28 and 14 on the road and a 21 and 18 at home. And when I remember back, and you and I talked about this, when I remember back to the last time two years ago when the Pelicans were in the in the playoffs versus Phoenix, and you were in the Smoky King Center. You couldn't hear yourself, and you were listening to the broadcast on a road game, and you couldn't hear through that. You remember and you know how much the Smoothie King Center can be an extra player for the Pelicans at any given time. Like, just that quick. If you give the people in New Orleans something to cheer about, all of a sudden they are the best fan base in the world that no one can compare to. It's just a different feeling. But for some reason, like if you look at the stats, they're almost identical. The, the points, the assists, the rebounds, the shooting, they're almost at. But for some reason, the Pels haven't been able to win some of these big ones at home. What is your thoughts on that? Like you, you obviously need to win at home in a playoff series. So what are your thoughts on just what what's the missing thing that just needs to click for this Pelicans team to capitalize on home court advantage? Yes, I said yesterday that I think, and I, I, it's crazy to say this out loud, to hear it out loud versus tweet it, to say that the, the best thing for the Pelicans might be to be the lower seed, to start on the road, um, <laughs> and then to, to have any game seven on the road because they play so much better on the road. Um, but I, I think what, what, what happens, uh, well, first of all, you know, you have a team that, has dealt with maturity issues that has dealt with, you know, distractions that's dealt with things. Right. And, you know, I think sometimes home in a way like that, there, there are, there are pockets of time where I think it is just, you just happen to lose the game at home versus you just happen to win the game away, right? Like, I think there are some, some of the data is that. Like, it just so happens this game happened to be at home. But I do think there is something to this team when they, when they get down to the, 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 the basketball and not the pageantry. And what I mean by pageantry is like when they, when they start to, to smell themselves a little bit, when they start to feel themselves a little bit, right? Going into that, that in season tournament game. And 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 like the the narrative was the Pelicans are coming. The Pelicans. It was all this pageantry about around the Pelicans, and they went out there and didn't give you the best effort. Um, and then as that game passed, and everybody was like, "Well, we'll just throw the Pelicans away. Well, only they ain't on TV or nothing." That's when they started to play ball like a little better. They started to play better, and then they got high on they high horse again, right? Going into the homestand, the Pelicans are here's the Pelicans. The Pelicans are here. They get into this homestand. And you lose a, a bunch of the home games. I think when this team gets on the road and they make basketball be the, the main thing, like that is the thing. I think there is something like a, an us versus them, us against the world mentality that you can get on the road. And, and these guys, emotional guys, right? And like to talk about Najee and, and Jose, like those guys can can rally you um, in a playoff. I mean, in, in a, on a road in an away game. And then CJ with his professionalism as well. Like they, this is a guy who comes, like he knows that's when the team needs to, to be the best. And that's when he needs to play his best. So they have better games. I remember that, that Minnesota game that came off two, 
two losses, uh, came off a couple of losses. You went in, they went into Minnesota, and everybody was like, well, this is just going to be another loss. Mm -hmm. But, like, that was the best game Zion and Brandon Ingram played together maybe ever. Um, and they were phenomenal in that game. And I think it's getting on that road, saying, okay, look, we're, we're, we're boiling all of this down to the game. There's no pageantry. There's no family members. There's no pressures. It's just the, these guys in the hotel room on the, you know, ready, ready to play. And I think that's when they, they, they play their best. Now they need to fix that. And I, I do think once you get into the playoffs, um, if this team kind of carries its per personality into the player and, and play the way that they're supposed to play, um, you know, obviously incorporating Brandon Ingram, which we'll talk about BI is going to be something, but I think if they bring their personality into this, this postseason. I think a lot of that should remedy itself once you get to, okay, listen, there's no, you know, there's no MVP. There's no first team agendas. It's just, can you win this playoff series? Can you play this, win this playoff game? Um, that is that, I think that that'll give them that, that extra kind of juice that they have. Um, but it, it's just been a weird season for the Pelicans as far as the home and road splits. Um, you know, it's, it, they play a lot of close games and maybe the closer games are at home um, and they lose those. So that, 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 that could also be a reason why, but it's just been a weird, a weird season for the Pelicans. Um, and I think as the playoffs come, I think the road stuff, the road things that will translate. I think that they really just like playing on the road. Um, but I do think some of that home stuff, the home issues um, get thrown out the window and it's just locking in and, and playing at home. I'd rather the team be bad, be bad at home in a regular season, because I do think you get a boost from the playoff atmosphere for the home games. I'd rather, if you're going to be great somewhere and <laughs> not good somewhere, be great on the road. Because if you sneak one away from the road uh, on the road, that's a bigger deal, especially for a lower seed than if you're at home. Right. I, I would agree with that. I think that, there is a lot of pressure. Like the city can feel that like the Pelicans are trying to put together. And you can tell that the Pelicans can feel that and want to buy into that as well. And that can be a lot of pressure. Like Willie Green said, ain't no banners at the top of the Smoothie King Center. You have a chance to write whatever history you want to as a team, right? And that can be a lot for a team who Jose turned, what, 26 the other day. He's like the fourth <laughs> oldest player on the team. Like, like it's, it's still a very young core from that standpoint. So I agree with you from that. Now we transition until tomorrow. All by all accounts, Brandon Ingram is coming back, supposed to make his debut after missing two and a half weeks um, at the perfect time. Cause the Pelicans need it. Um, they need him for this run. They need him for whatever they're going to do in the postseason. Now you're also coming off a of four, game win streak where you found out some things, right? Trey got his swagger back, right? Like CJ is hitting shots. Dyson is uh, making an impact. And they really haven't been playing like very large lineups. It's been condensed to eight or nine guys almost every night. So my question to you is like, whose minutes are getting impacted? And like, what rotations do you expect? Because the need for B.I. is obvious. He's not coming in and playing like 20 minutes. Like he's coming in <laughs> and playing 35. So these minutes are going from somebody who's been getting minutes. And so when you first look at the rotations, and I, again, this if, if things go well, you should be mixing and matching based off the matchups uh, that you have. Because this, the, the bench on this team, we talk about them all being even, being able to give you different things. Well, if they're throwing a 6'6 guy, I don't know if you want Jose guarding him, right? Like, things like that. How do you see this playing out? How do you see Willie Green and his staff figuring out how to reintegrate Brandon Ingram and figuring out how to still keep everybody else effective? Yeah. You know, sometimes Kang the Conqueror, he who <laughs> remains, he writes a storyline, right? And every so often – this storyline that he writes is like, there's no way you could have known this, but here we are. Yeah. Last game of the season, you get to determine if you play in, in the play-in tournament or not, The 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 which has people on Twitter have called the Pelicans Invitational. It's time for the Pelicans to get out the play-in tournament. You play, you're, 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 so you're playing to get out of there. You're facing 
the Lakers, which there is so much in between there, not even including, you know, you got the in AD story, yeah. you got the Brandon Ingram story. You're not even talking about the, the in-season tournament, the LeBron versus Zion. That is another thing. You, you're playing, you, you're winning four games in a row. In order to, to do it, you have to win a five-game <laughs> win streak. Which you have not been able to do this entire season. season. And this is the last game of the season, and it's at home where you haven't been playing well. If this isn't the most MCU storyline for the Pel- ending of the season for the Pelicans of all time, like this, this you could not have written this up at any, you know, any any better. And on top of that, what is the one thing everybody was like, ugh. What is going on with Brandon? With, I mean, with with with, uh, with Willie Green, it was his rotations, and so you went on this road trip without Brandon Ingram, and you're like, "Oh, okay, he found some rotations," and now you got Brandon Ingram coming in, where now the rotations will be thrust into to question, which we're talking about now. It's just it is it is a recipe for God no combustion, recipe for God knows what. <laughs> So Brandon Ingram's gonna come in and he's gonna start. Like that is who Brandon Ingram is. Who he is. This team needs Brandon Ingram. There is no question. Unless we could throw that all out the bar. We saw what happened in the homestand when CJ, when you played some of these better teams, and CJ was out there as the only shot creator when in the non-Zion minutes because JV wasn't playing. So it was CJ looking to Larry, who was like, I don't want it. And he looking to Najee, who. He will shoot it, but I don't know how much you, how many shots in a quarter you want. Brandon Ingram needs to have those those times when Zion isn't on the floor. Bi's got to be the guy to do it, and so there's going to be some changes, right? There's going to be some guys that's not, you know, that's that's not going to play as many minutes. Um, and how can they be effective? I think obviously JRE's minutes are going to be gone. I think um, I think that there's going to be. The, the issue, well, Larry won't be there. So, you know, we don't know if Larry will be there or not, but I assume he won't be. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't think that that he, he he's going to have some minutes to, to take up. So Brandon's going to get some of those. But then you start talking about like Najee and and those guys off the bench who those minutes because Trey is going to get his minutes. He's going to play mm-hmm. regardless. Um, and so it, there's going to be some decisions, but we've we've seen like Dyson, like I said, Dyson at the five and those things like. Zion, uh, Willie Green has found some things to go uh, against this. Like, I'm okay with Dyson out there against Jackson Hayes, and if that means that Brandon Ingram can stay on the floor uh, and things like that. So, I, I think that there is, there is, there are, there are going to be some machinations of, of of the Pelicans tomorrow. That you know, I, if you, you you have to win this game, so you have to make sure you're playing the best, you know, the best versions of the Pelicans and the best rotations. Um, but I do think that there's going to be some times where you saw, you know, Brandon Ingram, you haven't seen too much with Brandon Ingram and Dyson out there or, or things like that, where I think you'll see some of that tomorrow. So it's going to be interesting. This is going to be a huge, you think Willie had to stand, um, you know, stand to the side and take it all in after he beat <laughs> Steph Curry. I mean, uh, beat the Warriors out there. This is a game where everything that he has been, you know, has people have brought up and, and quite, everything will be front and center. Everybody will be watching. This is also one of the more like compelling races left, right? A lot of the other races is like, okay, if this person go get home court advantage, or this that like this is like, oh, this team it wins and they're not in the playing tournament, or this team loses and they're in a playing tournament, as well as the Lakers. Well, they get the home seed and they're playing. T- so, and then they do they have to face OKC at the number one spot. So, there's going to be a lot of attention on what's going on in this game, and so everything that 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 Willie has been bad at and has been improving at and things like that will be front and center for everybody to watch. Rotations will need to be there. The the the, the flexibility in your, your play style and the game plan will need to be there. All of that will need to be there. Um, and I, I think he'll be game for it. I think he'll be game for it. Um, he, he's he's gotten to the point. CJ sat some sometimes and he played Dyson at the five. So it, it seems as though He's willing if if things need to happen. He's more willing to do that now. Um, so we'll see, and you're you're gonna need it. But tomorrow, 
as 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 it should be, it's gonna be the biggest game of the season, and it's against that team that mm-hmm. has so much history with the Pelicans. So it, it should be it it should be a phenomenal atmosphere inside the uh, Smoothie King Center. I think Willie Green's coaching style and everything that you've seen the past three years has allowed him to have what Zion said the other night: trust from his team. If someone doesn't have it going, you got to be able to pull them. If it's not a good matchup, you got to be. You've seen, to your point, you've seen CJ sit at the end of the game. You've seen B.I. sit at the end of the game. You see Zion sit. If those three can sit, anybody can sit at any particular time. And so when you look at this game and you look at the postseason, with the starting five, with B.I. being in that, and Trey, and I would add Dyson that, together i know those seven players have to play the majority of the minutes now between jose larry naji whatever you want to do after that i think it's going to be a mix and match type situation based off the matchup that's presented to you but those seven have to see the bulk of the minutes like you talk about playoff rotations it's usually eight or nine guys some teams do seven right i think again jose can win you a game naji can win you a game Larry Nance probably could win you a game in different ways, but you're going to have to be able to be quick triggered because there was time and God bless them. JRE in these last two games, you had to play him because you had no one else available. He went in and immediately shook with the hell. And my, my, my brain went back to that Tony Snell moment uh, two years ago <laughs> versus the Clippers where Tony Snell went in the game. Things went downhill, and immediately he had to be taken off the game. You can't have long stretches with an 8-0, 9-0 run. That can't happen from here on out. And so with all the trust that you've built in this roster and they built in you, you got to be able to display it because, again, it's not a win or go home, but it's a win and get in in this particular way. And for everything you've battled through this season, that would be a hell of a way to end the regular season. So – we talk about what tomorrow means. Um, we know the in-season tournament was a wake-off call, and in some degrees, maybe you should be grateful for the Lakers for kicking your ass on a national stage because that woke up Zion. That woke up the rest of the team. Denver plays Minnesota. You would hope that they win. Shout out to Devontae Graham with a game buzzer beating win with no Wimby versus the Nuggets. I, I would assume the Nuggets are going to win that game. OKC plays Dallas. I don't think Kyrie and, and Luka are, are going to play. They didn't play the last game. I think OKC is going to win that game. So that leaves Minnesota versus Phoenix. And in a way, it's kind of a win-win scenario. Because if the Phoenix loses, that means that the Pels lock in the 6 feet, no matter if they win or lose versus the Lakers. But if they win and Dipper wins... That means you don't have to play the reigning MVP and probably going to be the three-time MVP the first round. Now, I get it. You might have to go through them anyway to go where you want to go. But I don't think, like, people are like, look at those past NBA champions and their road to resistance was nothing. Let's not count their championship. Well, I don't think you necessarily want the hardest test. Like, you want a little bit of a warm-up if you can possibly get to that point. But all in all... You got to win tomorrow, control your own destiny, book your seat in. But other than that, you let the chips fall. And if you get Denver, damn it, you better strap it up and ready to go. Uh, Because it's turning around quickly and you got the toughest test in front of you. So there's not a lot of time left, Garrick. Tomorrow is it. You'll know your fate after that, whether you're playing next week, whether you got a week off and you're drinking wine and eating popcorn like <laughs> cj says or you're strapping up the boots for the pelicans play uh, invitational once more again you will find <laughs> out tomorrow what do you got left for the people as we wrap up the regular season and you go into this stretch with everything on the line yeah yeah it, it is it is ugly poetic justice that the person who threw off the the pals gonna get six and and okc is gonna get three is Devontae Graham shoot a, <laughs> a, a game winner against the Nuggets? Just ugly poetic justice, but whatever. It is what it is. Uh, yeah, this this is it. I think one of the things the NBA is is on point this season because they scheduled everybody to tip off at twelve, 
and everybody else to tip off at 2.30. So there won't be no, oh, let's watch, and maybe we don't play later, or maybe we don't, oh, so we don't need to play our play. Everybody better play. If you trying to win, you need to put them out there on the floor. Ain't no ducking the smoke. Ain't no trying to fix the standings. None of that. Like, you put your best players out there, and you ball, and when your game is over, that's when you look at the scoreboard, and you be like, oh, dang, well, we lost. So I love it. Uh, everybody's going to be out to play. Everybody's playing all 30, all 30 teams is going to be incredible. And your season you played Zion has played the most games and you've won the most road games and CJ set the franchise record in three pointers made. And you've had franchise record records and points broken and assists and this and that and three pointers made all of those accolades, all of that progression, all of the things that you've worked for in a, in a competition season, ball down to do you want to be in the top six seed do you want to avoid the play-in tournament do you want to be already in when that playoffs and, and kicking your feet up and watching the game and all you have to do is win one home game against a team that you beat their ass on on no new year's day at home go out there do what you need to do play the right rotations be ready to make changes if not um, and I think the Pelicans are looking in, you know, going going into the playoffs and whoever it may be, you know, whether it's Denver, whether it's Minnesota, obviously, you know, if I had my pick, I would not want to play Jokic. I think that Jokic is uniquely great at a position where the Pelicans are direct as, as far as defense goes. And if JV gets in foul trouble, Lord, pray for us all. Um, and I, I, I just I don't want I, I would not want that. But like you said, you, you play who you play. That the cards go where they go, but the only way to to get the, in there and to start that is to win uh, and not have to worry about the playing tournament. So, with the regular season wrapping up, man, thank you guys so much for rocking with us this 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 regular season. Another one in the books. Uh, it's been phenomenal. It's been it's been a, a blast going to to these games and meeting some of you guys and the chalk talk and everything. Thank y'all so much for hopping in these live shows on on unannounced and unprompted. Sometimes schedules don't let us you know come out and say when these are. But you guys are, are, are coming in here. We see all the comments. We see all the all the messages, all of the, the comments in the YouTube things as well. Thank y'all so much. We'll be we'll be rocking for the playoffs. We'll be in the buildings. We'll be recording. We'll be sending those messages out. Um, yes, it is festival time, West Bank Rick. So uh, with that being said, uh, follow myself at Garrick underscore Rattler. Follow my brother at Raphael underscore Rattler. Follow the page at No Basketball No E. That's on anywhere you get your social medias. Uh, and most importantly, subscribe to New Orleans Basketball, and we'll see you guys in the postseason.